All right, what we have here is the uh, Basquiat's The Horn Players, and uh, it's number 226. The artist is Jean-Michel Basquiat. This piece right here was made in 1993. It is acrylic and oil using a paint stick, like you would stir paint with, on three canvas panels. Uh, before we talk about this piece, which, by the way, is in the Broad in um, LA. Uh, this is where I'm going to give you a little bit more information on Jean-Michel Basquiat. Uh, he lived from 1960 to 1988, so he was very young when he died. He was considered a neo-expressionist painter, but he really began his career as a graffiti artist. Um, but throughout his short career, he is interested in history, art history, religion, politics, he's really interested in music, and then art and art appropriation. He was considered with the history of identity, culture, and race and society, being that he was Afro-Caribbean. Um, he covered the walls of Lower Manhattan when he was a teenager with short philosophical texts, and then he would usually sign it with the tag capital A, I'm sorry, capital S, capital A, capital M, capital O, or SAMO, and that's short for same old shit. As SAMO, um, he wrote maxims, jokes, and prophecies in marker and spray paint on subway trains, as well as on the walls of Soho and Tribeca neighborhoods. This is in the um, mid to late 70s when he was like a teen young teenager, and um, this is a time when New York City was not the beautiful um, city that it is today, or at least most of it is. Um, this is a time period when New York City is going through um, a lot of crime. Uh, it's not safe to walk in neighborhoods. And it was a lot of, um, the buildings were degraded. It was just not beautiful New York that we think today. It certainly wasn't safe to walk around at night for most people, but um, he's uh, going to, that's when he's going to be in his tagging phase. Um, he will um, also participate in the 1980 Times Square show that I mentioned in the stylistic portion of the notes, and he showcased raw and aggressive styles of subway and graffiti artists which was staged in an abandoned building in New York City on 7th and 44th Street in Manhattan. And it was considered the quote-unquote first radical art show of the 1980s. Late 70s and early 80s, New York was in financial ruin, and it's completely opposite of what we think of when we think of New York City today. This show and similar exhibitions will lead to the explosion of several careers of artists still active today, like Kiki Smith, who will be our next artist we talk about. As the economy improved in the late 70s and early 80s, so did New York City and galleries in the East Village take over. At that time is when Basquiat's fame grew internationally. He uh, has an encounter with Andy Warhol where he tries to get Andy Warhol to sign some postcards and ultimately develop a friendship with Andy Warhol. Um, and uh, by the age of 20, he's going to be having shows in Rome, Los Angeles, Zurich, Rotterdam, and, um, and that was only when he was 20 years old. By 1983, he was such a huge success that his, worth, his work uh, often was worth upward of $20 million. He had been referred to as the Black Picasso because, and, and a lot of his work often appropriated works of Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Manet, and Picasso in his compositions. Basquiat uh, wanted to make paintings that look like they were made by a child, but his work really is a sophisticated mix of appropriated imagery from uh, modern art combined with blunt references to race and street life. Basquiat's work is one of the few examples of how early 1980s punk or graffiti-based and counterculture practice could be fully recognized and critically embraced and celebrated popularly as an artistic phenomenon, which is similar to the rise of the American hip-hop movement 
that was happening at the same era. Despite his work's unstudied appearance, Basquiat very skillfully, purposefully brought together in his art a host of disparate traditions, practices, and styles to create a unique kind of visual collage, one deriving in part from his urban origins and another a more distant African-Caribbean heritage. For some critics, Basquiat's swift rise to fame and then equally swift and tragic death due to a drug overdose, heroin, epitomizes and personifies the overly commercial and hyped up international art scene of the mid-1980s. It was a cultural phenomenon that for many observers was symptomatic of a largely artificial bubble economy of the era. Basquiat's work is an example of how American artists of the 1980s could reintroduce the human figure in their work after the wide success of minimalism and conceptualism, thus, uh, I'm sorry, I just missed my spot. Um, that, um, that established a dialogue with the more distant traditions of the 1950s abstract expressionism. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the horn players. In this piece, it is on the left, um, the, it portrays the legendary jazz musicians, Charlie Parker, a saxophonist and an upper left, who's in the upper left, and then Dizzy Gillespie, a trumpeteer, who's in the center right. And it's using an urgent paint application and a hurried lettering to convey Basquiat's dedication to jazz and his passionate determination to foreground African-American subjects, but in an unsentimental way. This is both a linguistic and visual portrait. On the left side, he shows the figure of Parker holding a saxophone, which emits several musical notes in hot pink and distorted waves of sound. Dizzy Gillespie on the right is holding the, his silent trumpet next to his torso. The words du shu di obi, that float to the left of his head, refers to the improvisational singing that Gillespie would often do on stage. And then many of the words that are on this piece relate to Parker, but only make sense if you know stuff about the musician. For example, the literal meaning of ornithology is the study of birds, which is one of Gillespie's and um and Parker's pieces that they made together, but it's also a reference to um, the recorded song Bird, and it's also a nickname of his. And then the word pre and chan refers to the saxophonist's daughter and wife. The central panel does not show a portrait of an identifiable musician, but it does show similarities to a painting that's done by Picasso titled The Three Musicians. This is also a triptych format, a popular device for this time period that echoes the triple subject of Picasso's piece and also harkens back to the triptych that we saw in Renaissance art. His choice of subject is also significant because he depicts famous African-American quote unquote heroes. They were innovative in their fields, but prone to self-debilitating behavior. In fact, Parker also died of a heroin overdose in, at the age of 34, uh, so he had that in common with Basquiat. Um, and then, let's see, this click right here, or this image, is called Untitled 1981, and it's considered the most iconic image from Basquiat to identify him. It concentrates really on a singular form, it was done relatively quickly in a single setting that reveals that Basquiat was a colorist and that composition is indebted to an expressionist style to highlight the human body. At the top left, it looks like he's writing. I think I'm looking at this one. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, the, on the top left of the image, it looks like he's writing text um, and lines are choppy and abstract to focus on the viewer of the head at the vocal point. There are similar lines on the opposite part of the canvas to the lower right. And then the spike punk style of afro on the head is stitching, which is 
what's needed to keep masks together and it covers all that is going on in his head. So it's also referencing African masks from an art historical sense, as does this one. And this one is also in the Broad, and this one is often considered a self-portrait. So um, Basquiat lived a very short life, but one of the things that um, they also show at the Broad is his, I guess they call it today, or I've heard it called, a bromance. I mean, he really ended up having a great relationship with um, Andy Warhol, and Andy Warhol is, they, they do a, um, like, complimentary works together, but this is the portrait of Andy Warhol that Basquiat did. Uh, sorry that the mask is kind of covering it. Um, it's also interesting that Basquiat's um, becomes so popular still to this day. I don't know if you guys knew, but last year, Billabong uh, released uh, bathing suits that had Basquiat pieces on them. Uh, my husband has um, a pair of trunks and my daughter has one of the bikinis. So, And then Basquiat pieces are still selling for in the millions and millions of dollars today, even though he's been gone since, um, you know, for, since 1988, I think I said is when he died. So um, for a short life and a short career, he really made a big influence on the art scene of the 1980s in New York.